Wireless LAN Professionals Podcast, Episode 147. Wireless LAN Professionals is a place to educate, inform, encourage, and entertain those involved in wireless LANs. This Wireless LAN Professionals Podcast is an audio manifestation of these goals. Our host is a wireless LAN veteran, consultant, designer, and teacher, Keith Parsons. And now, the podcast for wireless LAN professionals by wireless LAN professionals. Glenn, how are you, sir? Hey, Matthew, I'm doing just great. How are things out in your neck of the woods in Tempe, Arizona? They are going well. We're definitely feeling the warmth already. <laughs> so yeah. we're getting ready for the hot, hot summer. But yeah, things are definitely warmer than they were at WLPC in Phoenix last yeah. time we were out here. So. Yeah, the, those cool mornings there in February are really nice in Phoenix, I tell you. Yeah, so hey, we're normally kind of doing blog reviews together. Last few times, if anyone's been listening, it, we're usually talking about blog reviews, but I thought I would kind of pause that for a moment and have a conversation a little bit more about you and kind of where you're coming from and just some of your experiences, if that's okay. Hey, that sounds awesome. Let's let's go, let's go for it. So, first of all, you are CWNE. What number? Uh, number one eighty one. One eighty one. So, tell me a little bit about your journey to CWNE. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's been an interesting journey. Uh, I usually, you know, a lot of people want to know, hey, how long does it take to get CWNE? And if you do one exam like a year, about three years. As for me, it took me seven years. <laughs> So uh, I just seven year I, plan. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's a number of things that went in there, changing jobs. My dad was in the hospital for a while. So, you know, life, life hands you those uh, little obstacles once in a while. But uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, that's really how the CWE process started for me. And uh, unlike a lot of people too, Matthew, I, I think who start out, they go into the route, switch in and they want to get to wireless. Uh, as for me, I kind of come to the uh, wireless profession from a little different avenue. Um, okay. I uh, had 18 years working with an uh, energy utility company in IT, but I did PC repair and uh, PC support. So, you know, imaging PCs and sending them out and supporting um, our field technicians um, here in the beautiful state of Florida where I'm located. Uh, that's uh, what I did, but I always, I always uh, loved RF, and uh, I thought Wi-Fi. Hey, this is uh, this is the way to go. So, started doing some training, and that's how my uh, my career kind of got started. What What was your certification journey? Yeah, well, that's that's a good that's a good question. I um um I kind of said, okay, do do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? So I started out. Bought, I bought one of the CWNA study guides, which a lot of people do. Is hey, you know, it's only thirty forty bucks. So I'll just spend that on a book, and it'll be a good reference. So I started reading through it and went out to the website and started following some Wi-Fi blogs. I said, okay, this is really kind of fun. Yeah. And uh, I said, I think I'm just, I don't know if there was like a day as I'm going to go my certification, but uh, there was uh, this process of saying, you know, this, this is what I want to do. And, and a lot of people, Matthew, um, have a, I just use the word passion. They just have a passion for Wi-Fi technology. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, we, we, you, we talk with different people at different things like WLPC or, or some of the other um, uh, you know, webinars and things we go to. And uh, we, we just start talking tech and we just like the hours just go by. And we just love this technology. And so that's, I think it was all kind of wrapped up together. I mean, if you hate wireless, this is not what you want to do. But if you kind of <laughs> like the technology and you love this stuff, you know, this, this is where you want to go. And um, another thing that kind of fits in there, um, I think I've mentioned to you and some others as well, I'm a ham radio operator and, and I love ham radio. I uh, got my first uh, ham radio ticket back in high school using Morse code and learning radio theory. And, and I just, I, there's a lot of uh, ham radio that molds over or folds over, I should say, and into, into Wi-Fi. And so I guess all those things kind of mixed together it says, this is my destiny, Luke. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I have to go into Wi-Fi. It was wonderfully. <laughs> there you go. So anyway, that's, that's kind of how things got started for me anyway. Very cool. So there wasn't like someone saying, uh, Glenn, we need someone who is an expert in this. Take this certification or else you're fired. Well, no, not exactly. But when I was with the energy utility, the networking people there says, hey, uh, Glenn knows a little bit about Wi-Fi now. So let me go down there and see if he can help find some things. And so one of the one of the deals was there was uh, on our 16th floor at our executive building downtown, 
they were having problems with Wi-Fi in one of the conference rooms. And so I went up there and I had a Fluke Air Check, which is one of those tools that we love to use. And I started measuring stuff around. And I said, well, let's go see what we can hear. And, and so the other network engineer says, oh, we've got to fix this. Well, we have a, um, you know, had a union shop. And so we could not move an access point. We had to get a union contractor yeah. to come in. And we had moved the access point a little cl closer and solve the problem. So, you know, that mixed into the things of, well, maybe I should do this for a living, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I hear kind of a common theme talking to people about their journey. It's, it's there's passion and problem. There's always yeah. like, there's you have that built-in passion already. And then just solving a problem kind of opens up the door to more certification or more experience and kind of they drive one another yeah it well, well it, be a common theme and other things that kind of feed in that matthew is that you if someone kind of knows you know a little bit about wi-fi says hey can you help out here um my yeah. wife's school for example is small it's a small private uh school k-12 through uh here in our area and they had just a bunch of old old you know, 11 b access points just laying around and that's what their Wi-Fi was. They knew they needed to improve it. And they said, hey, can you think you could help? And so I downloaded a free app, uh, Ekahout Heat Mapper. Some of you know what that is. It's not. It's like the light version of Ekahout Site Survey. And downloaded it, site surveyed. You know, we pulled cable and hooked up Wi-Fi. And guess what? It worked. And it was a huge improvement. So um, it was kind of neat helping them. And there's another thing like, okay, well, maybe I can do this for a living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. So, you know, you're, you start the process, you're, you're looking at CWNA and then just things are starting to come together. You're obviously have this passion for it towards CWNE specifically. What kind of surprised you the most about that whole process yeah, that maybe well, you weren't expecting as you just kind of passively got into it? Yeah. Well, maybe a couple of surprises. One, um, um, <laughs> as I was working through certification, um, my job got outsourced to our headquarters in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I was thinking about going into Wi-Fi full time, and now I'm without a job. And uh, so, hello. So, but I had, you know, at that time I was following lots of people in the industry, uh, different CBN uh, people, and I kind of tweeted or DM one of the guys I knew and says, "Hey, um, wonder if you're looking for any." Uh, um, you know, wireless technicians in your in your company, your VAR. He was with the VAR, and uh, he said, are we ever? And so set up an interview for me, and, and they had just fired two people in Florida who just weren't doing the job well. And that just happened like two weeks ahead. And uh, I was, remember, I was over at my daughter's college on the, uh, in near West Palm Beach. And I got this phone call from my friend. He said, hey, I've got an interview set up for me. I said, oh, you're kidding, you know? Wow. And so technically from when I had my voluntary severance through the energy utility I was with to starting the new company, I had three days of unemployment. And so that, that, that worked out pretty good. And it was over the holidays and the Christmas holidays. So that was fun too. But uh, anyway, it was just like, um, you know, so I, I think in this whole journey that uh, if I can encourage anyone out there, you're going to have obstacles thrown in your way. I don't know what those obstacles will be, but don't, you know, you know as they say, don't, don't take the lemons and make lemonade out of them. Don't let them, you know, discourage you too much because you're going to have different discouragements and uh, you know, just, you know, take it and to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to move on. And, and so, just keep on moving on. If you're really interested, and this is what you want to do in your career, you know, talk to some different people. Uh, I, I always tell anyone who's interested in Wi-Fi, man, get, first thing you need to do, I, I, I believe, I really honestly believe, Matthew, is get on Twitter. And people say, well, I don't do social media. I said, well, don't do it. Just follow people on Twitter. And you don't have to tweet. You just follow people. And it's amazing what you will learn. I still remember when the 802.11 AC certification was, was listed. I saw it on Twitter before it was officially announced. Yeah. And so there, I mean, it was that morning. It was announced that afternoon. But but still, I mean, there's just tons of things you can learn on Twitter and and then follow Wi-Fi blogs. So if anyone's kind of interested, just, uh, you know, get, get, first thing, get on Twitter and start following people. And it's amazing what you'll learn. Very cool. Um, struggles, obstacles came anywhere. Was there other things that... Uh, were particularly difficult for you going into, you know, either Wi-Fi as an industry or specifically the certifications? 
Yeah, and I think I've kind of mentioned this before. I came out of um, the PC technology in, you know, doing yeah. Microsoft work. And so I didn't have the route switch background that a lot of people do. In fact, I talk to so many wireless uh, professionals now and they say, oh, yeah, I did route switch for 15 years. I go, oh, my goodness. I just like to have one or two full time years of that experience to help me out. But so that was one thing. Um, um, I, one thing that really helped me was uh, my amateur radio background. And I, I mentioned that a minute ago. Yeah. Um, uh, the ham radio technology that you learn. I mean, this is stuff that you have to know to get your FCC amateur radio license in the U.S. And I think other countries, Canada and Europe, they have the same thing. They have a test and you have to learn radio theory. You have to learn a lot about RF and antennas. And uh, I just... I mean, I just love building antennas. I could, you know, just, you know, just lock me in a room with a bunch of antennas, throw away the key. I'll be happy forever, you know. And, <laughs> it's alive. Uh, it's, it's alive, I realize. I, and antenna technology to me is just so cool. And, you know, every access point has an antenna. It may be an internal antenna, but it has an antenna. And the external antennas, you know, I've done quite a bit of site survey for for warehouses and uh, special events and point-to-point -point stuff. And antennas are key. So that's another thing that to me is like, I still had to learn, you know, the Wi-Fi stuff, you know, yeah. how antennas are applied, you know, different polarizations, things of that nature. But that helped me out a lot. So, When you're talking to other uh, Wi-Fi professionals or, you know, whether they've got experience or not, are you finding certain things that trip people up um, often that maybe you find a little easier for you or things that you can encourage people that you see them getting struggling with or like i said getting hung up on certain things at certain concepts yeah and i think every every um i think person coming up in the industry has their little struggles doing this and that and um i like to hear what those are and sometimes i've just you know I, one thing I've, I've done matthew i've listed a bunch of web blogs on my on my blog site yeah uh, gkwifi.wordpress.com if anyone wants to check them out and there are some people in there that are just just outstanding bloggers and we've kind of reviewed some of those blogs in the past uh on the show here but um some bloggers are really good on security some are really good on uh, deployment some are good on site survey some are good at uh, the cwap or protocol analysis and so if someone's having a, a, a difficulty there sometimes i can point them to hey have you checked out this person's website and uh, that helps a bit in helping someone with the specific questions. And so I don't know if there's any any specific area. I think every uh, wireless you know, engineer coming into the industry, they, they're good at some things. Other things just trip them up. I think a lot of people do get tripped up on protocol analysis, you know, packet captures and, and what do all these things mean. I mean, I still struggle with that from time to time. And, yeah. and, and because, well, one thing is I don't have to do as much troubleshooting with packet capture. Now, some people would say, listening to the podcast here is like, what? You don't do packet capture? Well, not as much as I would like to. Uh, some people packet capture all the time and, and do troubleshooting, but I'm doing a lot more deployment and, and other stuff right now. So, um, But that's one thing that uh, if anyone has uh, some difficulty, it's probably packet capture protocol analysis. And if you do that, just do it regularly. You know, Do a couple of packet captures a day and just kind of look through to get familiar with it. Very cool. Um, kind of going to that the actual certification for CWNE. Talk through kind of your process of, of when you um, you actually started getting in the the kind of the last leg of getting to that that certification. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, well, well, and going through the whole process, and people say, well, which what do you start out with? And I I say, so let's start out CW. If you want to go through the CWNE process, start out with CWNA. If you have like no micro or micro background or um, background at all in wireless. Uh, the CWS and the CWT certifications that CWNP has just released are really pretty good. I'm reviewing those right now yeah. for the CWNP. And I tell you what, Tom Carpenter, and kudos to Tom and uh, his organization. They've put together some really good stuff. And as a CWD, you would think, well, I'm not going to learn much if I review this. I'm yeah. I'm being challenged on some of this stuff, and uh, it's it's good. But if you have some wireless background, if you're already a Cisco tech or something, um, maybe you want to start with CWNP. So I did that. Um, CWSP, DP, and AP, uh, people often ask and blog, which one should I take next? I go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, seriously, if someone said, how would I recommend? I would say probably do CWAP. That's the analysis. That's probably the harder of the other three exams. 
and then SPVP you could pick whatever. But I've yeah, yeah. I've I've known people, Matthew, who have done it this way. They've done CW AP, DP, and SP. Then they went back and took NA. Now, yeah. well, that's, that's backwards, right? Well, some people have done it backwards. So there's really no wrong way to do it. But if you yeah. ask my ask my uh, process, I would do that. And then um, as we go through the process of CWNA, there's a lot of other things that you have to get for your CWNE. You have to get your other two wireless certificate network certifications. You have to have three years of industry experience. And so that's a little bit of a challenge for someone who, like me, who isn't like 100% full time yeah, yeah. in wireless, you know? So, how do I write up? Well, I did some nonprofit organization stuff. So, I wrote that up. I did some work for some other organizations. I wrote that up and uh, had some other, um, other things that I could include with that. The, um, the, other, the other thing is, um, um, it, it's your projects or your essays, they call them. And so, so yeah. have you actually done that? And I've reviewed a few for some some um, different CWD candidates. And I tell people, find a, a problem, use your CWNP skills, and tell how you solve that problem. The, again, the, the CWNP, uh, any board of directors is not wanting to say, well, I want to describe how ETLS works in the industry. They, they know that because that's in the study guide. They want to know what problems you have solved and how you use your uh, wireless skills to solve those problems and then tell what was the result. So I'm just going to encourage anyone who's working on their process, don't don't give them technology, don't give them websites. This is how you do this or do that. They want to know what problems you have how solved. You did, yeah, how you solved them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. if you do that, you'll you'll get your certification with them. Without a doubt. So, as a, a wireless LAN professional, um, you know, you talked about ham radio experience. Um, what other certifications have you found real helpful, just in general, that you you've leaned on um, in your own career? Yeah. Well, I mentioned a ham radio already, and that is good. If uh, if someone ever gets bit by the ham radio bug, they'll probably never get cured, and <laughs> which is a good thing. But there's just so much you can do in ham radio. I could start for 50 more minutes talking about that. You can satellite communication, digital communication, talking to long distance country. I mean, I, I talked to three or four Switzerland stations this weekend because they had a Switzerland contest going on. So that was fun for my little my little antenna up and up about 30 feet up in the air. It's really kind of cool to do that. So. Um, I, I had uh, the CompTIA A plus certification. I needed that when I did Lenovo repair for the energy utility I worked for. So that's one. Um, Network Plus is another good uh, certification that will not only give you um, aspect on the route switch of things, but it will also be one of those wireless certifications that you can use for your uh, CWE uh, cert. So uh, that's another one to get, go for. Um, some people have project skills now that. Uh, will help you along as you as you work things as you work through um, deployments. I'm going to do some project skills in the background, like CISSP, something of that. That will necessarily be, a, um, I, I think, a CWNE certification, but it will certainly help you along. Um, so those are just a, just a handful of things. I, I'm trying to think of some other uh, certs that I have. Um, I've got Microsoft MCSE, and that. Um, I'm not sure if the CWNE board of directors said that was a good one or not, but the part well, even of, not C, you know, even not the necessarily CWNP and all of them. Just just as a professional, what have you found leaning on these certifications that have been useful? You know, so whether it helps you get towards CWNE or not, but just in your in your field, you know. Um, yeah, well, well, I just mentioned about the CWA, uh, the C and MCSE certification. That cert does have one section was TCP/IP, so that is some network network certification there. Um, um, trying to think of I some know, specific. Yeah, I know here. some guys that uh, maybe we won't mention any names, Keith, but <laughs> that have, are self-proclaimed <laughs> uh, certification junkies. You know that they just really love the the process of learning and and having different certifications. I know we've talked to Chris Avance several times on the the show, and and you know uh, being a big Cisco guy just talks about that whole process. And so it definitely seems that in, in WLAN industry people have different approaches to certifications. And, and so it's just interesting to kind of hear your cert route, I guess. Yeah. Well, some of those you'd mentioned, I mean, um, I, I'm working right now on um, CCNP wireless right now. I've got a couple of the tests done for that right now. So there's, there's another thing. The other, some vendors have 
um, I, a, what I call a low-end certification start. I know that Aruba um, has a like of an entry level into their certification process. Cisco, of course, um, but there's uh, other certification things out there in the industry that maybe it isn't, um, um, you know, the highest end, you know, the equivalent of a CWNP certification, but it is training. And uh, so there's uh, lots of free stuff out there. It just has to kind of dig and look and, and all this training uh, will just give you, give you a leg up as you're looking at um, moving forward in your career in the industry. If you uh, could kind of start your career over or jump in a time machine and go talk to the younger you, any advice or anything you might do differently than you've done so far? Uh, yeah, and I kind of touched on it before. Um, probably uh, get a bit more route switch experience. Uh, that probably would be one help there. Um, the other thing, as I kind of started, I didn't know that there were a lot of um, mentors out in the, uh, in the Wi-Fi industry. Um, I know of one individual. I won't mention his name either, Keith, uh, Matthew. <clears throat> it, it isn't Keith. It's a friend of Keith's. Um, he actually has paid in the past. Engineers come down to work with him. He teaches them Wi-Fi cert, uh, techniques and how to do site survey. And their cost is basically he, he pays for them to come down. And um, their pay, if you will, is to work with him for like a week on how to do site surveys. Oh, very cool. So I'm thinking, okay, he got, it's a win-win. He got a win because he was able to get a site survey done. The engineers who came down worked with him, a leading um, Wi-Fi engineer in the industry, and was able to uh, equip these two individuals with one of the best engineer technique possible. So there's another thing. There's um, mentors out there. He said, well, who can mentor me? You got to go out and ask. You know, yeah. put a put a uh, blurb out on Twitter and just say, "Hey, uh, I have some questions. Who can, who can be a mentor for me?" And and I know uh, an individual who actually helped me get my job with my VAR said to me, "says Well, um, there's somebody else I need to mentor now after I got my CWNE." So um, there are individuals out there. I would say everyone has maybe got the mentor skills or abilities, but there are men and women, uh, men and women, by the way. Lots of women who are getting into the CWNE ranks now. I'm very excited to hear that. And I um, really encourage all the women listening here says, don't let these men kind of do their chauvinistic thing. You go out there and you go in for the industry because we need women as well in the industry, uh, a lot of them. And uh, just go out and uh, find a mentor and uh, hook up with them. Maybe you can hook a podcast or WebEx or something of that nature or just, you know, exchange emails. That's uh, uh Lots of lots of men and women want to mentor people in the industry. Yeah, that's great. Like get in and take initiative. Don't wait for it to happen to you. Actually, right? Yeah, right. Search you, and look. Yeah, and if ask. You, if you wait around, uh, it ain't going to happen. You know, you just got to go out and you know take some initiative. And and if you don't know where to do, I mean, shoot, ask me. Ask anybody on Twitter. Um, you know, again, you need to be on Twitter. That means get started. So by the end of this pro, so while anyone's yeah, listening yeah. to this broadcast, they need to be setting up their Twitter account even as they listen to this podcast. Okay, yeah, and uh, so, but yeah, do that. Get and mentors are out there. Uh, going back to kind of the CWNE thing specifically, what what does it mean to you to be a CWNE? Oh my goodness! I, I I'll start off a little bit. All of us who are CWNEs know where we were when we got the notification that we got it. Um, <laughs> I, I'll just tell you a snippet here. I was doing a site survey at a warehouse uh, mm -hmm. north of Cincinnati, and uh, my phone starts going bonkers. All these things coming in. What is going on here? One tweet after another. I'm looking through here. couldn't figure it out. I said, CMUNE, congrats. I said, I haven't got it yet. I haven't been notified. So I had to, had to scroll through there and I found- So you're right about Twitter, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I found the one from CWNP and I couldn't believe it. And so the only person there I could tell, there was a, there was a Cisco systems engineer there and I told him about it. He said, I've kind of heard about it. And I told him I just got this cert. He said, well, let me give you a high five. So I gave him a high five. And um, <laughs> and the other people let me know as well. But no, the um, you know, it's called Certified Wireless Network Expert. I'm kind of- freaky about the term expert because i don't really matthew i don't think i'm an expert in anything you know but they didn't want to put the g for guru in there cwng yeah, yeah. did, did it doesn't sound right okay 
But uh, I just feel like I, I just got to a plateau, and, and now I, I have learned a certain amount of, um, of information, but I am no expert. I am I am yeah. just learning. So I don't know what the equivalent of E in learning is. I, I understand CWNE expert. Like a V for veteran or, or yeah. so, a lot or something. <laughs> so, something like that, yeah. But but in, in all seriousness, it's just it, it's just a great feeling to know you've accomplished, but it's just like yeah. – I'm there, but man, there's so much more to learn. Uh, and all of us in the industry know that it, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't holding still. I mean, it continues to move forward. You know, two eleven AX is out there. Internet of Things is just huge. Um, it, it, I mean, it's just moving forward, and it just seems like almost, <laughs> almost every day, I found that some group, you know, needs Wi-Fi set up. It's not organization, nonprofit organization. I'll, I'll get hit up by a friend and say, hey, do you know you could do if you anyone can do this and and so I mean Wi-Fi is just going full full speed ahead. I just don't know if there's going to be enough Wi-Fi engineers to, wow. to meet all the need and demand out there. And uh, so we need more Wi-Fi engineers, definitely. Very cool. So C W N E, what's if if it's if it's a moving target, well, not a moving target, but it doesn't mean you've arrived, quote unquote. What's next for Glenn? Oh, next for Glenn. Well, I just threw that out. Um, uh, Internet of Things. Um, yeah, there's uh, it, it's big. I might have an opportunity to that coming up in the near future. Um, the the thing about Internet of Things is it's they're not always designed well, and uh, there's not a lot of good wireless engineers working on the design of these things and internet of things or the deployment. So there's, there's one area there. Um, uh, consulting, which is a thing, anyone with a CWNE, um, I think they're hit up pretty good on consulting. And so there's opportunities there. And then, um, I, I, and the sky's the limit and fi find out where, you, in fact, not only do you have a passion, I, I think in, in, in the industry, Matthew, but I think we have sort of like a sub passion, if you will. I mean, I just love antennas and, and, yeah. and design, but I, I think you may, you, you may just really enjoy deployment. Uh, you may enjoy the design part. You may enjoy security. There's a lot of sub parts of the wireless industry as well. That someone can be a, a, a subspecialist, if you if you will, kind of niche down, as they say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I know people who are just experts in security or packet analysis. And so there's lots of things you can do once you get into the industry and move on. And you know, one thing as well, um, when some of our uh, individuals who are listening to the podcast, let's say you're either moving towards CWE or you have some of your certifications, um, if I could just encourage them not only on Twitter, but uh, get on LinkedIn and really develop your online profile. And it is it is really your online resume. Uh, I have some people who've done some like some in-depth research into LinkedIn, and they tell me that uh, companies are not using hiring uh, companies anymore or headhunters. They're actually going out themselves and finding people on LinkedIn. Wow. And uh, so dress up, make sure your LinkedIn profile just doesn't have the, the blank avatar up there, which is gray with a white background. Put a good p professional picture up there. Um, put in your certifications, look through, and you can search on LinkedIn how to dress up your LinkedIn profile. There's a lot of things you can do. You just don't have, you put your name, you put your name, comma, CWNE or CWSP, if you will. Yeah. There's lots of things you can do. Um, I know the job I have now, one of the comments that was made by uh, the hiring manager says, I saw your LinkedIn profile during one of my interviews. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they're looking. Yeah, they are. And it's interesting that um, they're not necessarily using hiring managers or headhunters to do it. Mm -hmm. They're doing it themselves. So make sure your LinkedIn profile looks good. Keep it updated. Put on your put on your volunteer organizations. Put what you do well. And uh, that will probably help you move into the door. That might give you the interview in front of somebody else for, for a job opportunity. Very cool. So here's a kind of maybe wrapping our time up. It's a fun question. What's uh, what's a favorite tool that you're using these days? Oh, favorite tool. What's do your, do you yeah, what's in your toolbox arsenal? Do you even have to ask that question? We all know what it is. It's Wi-Fi Explorer by Adrian Granados. There is no other tool. As if you have a MacBook, and Adrian, if you're listening, kudos to you. Thanks again for giving back to the industry. Uh, Adrian is just a super guy. His story when he came in from Costa Rica, um, 
uh, 10, 15 years ago uh, and just started developing software. And uh, he developed Wi-Fi Explorer several years ago. And we all said, this is just an incredible software tool. Um, I literally use Wi-Fi Explorer every day. It's up on my MacBook at work. I have, a, I have a PC and a MacBook. My MacBook is my tool of choice, if you will. And so I've got it on there. Uh, he's also written Airtool, which is free, and Wi-Fi Signal, which is free, which you can put on your MacBook. And they are just the best tools. Now, uh, so Adrian, thank you again for giving back to the industry. Now, my second tool of choice would be the NetScout G2, which I do not have. But I've had actually had one in my hands. I, I almost didn't leave my hands. It was like the super glue I put on there. I couldn't give it back to the person. But uh, no, it's a, it's a great tool also. I do have a, a, a Fluke um, AirTrek, which is like the G1, if you will. And it okay, is yeah. just great. You can turn it on. And if you can turn it on, and look at the health of a Wi-Fi network in 30 seconds, people will think you're a genius. And so that's another tool that I really think that uh, um, if you don't, it's on my wish list to get the G2. If it's not on yours, um, I would have those tools definitely in your grab bag, in your arsenal. Wi-Fi Explorer. Thank you, Adrian. And then uh, Nescau G2. There you go. Very cool. Uh, you haven't gotten your sidekick then yet. Huh? Um, my sidekick is on order <laughs> at work right now. Uh, it's oh, it's just very cool. So anyway, yeah, that's a uh, uh, we could we go on another thirty minutes on the sidekick? Yeah, <laughs> Eka Hal has just done a slam down great job on this tool. Oh my goodness, and I've used one, I've seen it, but I don't have my own. At least yeah. not for another six weeks, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a backlog item for sure. Yeah. So, uh, any last thoughts? Any last encouragement, or just you know, what what would what wisdom, Mister Expert, would you like to leave with us? Yeah, the guru, come up to the mountain. <laughs> and you'll, I'll give you a piece of bread and boards from on high. No, yeah. um, you, you know, I, I tell people, well, how do you how do you move on the program and keep your learning going? Uh, it sounds very simple, but you know, learn something new about Wi-Fi every day. And uh, that will just keep you moving on. Um, I'm trying to think what I learned about Wi-Fi today, but I was doing some work online and, and it just reminded me about channel bonding or something. It's, oh, okay, that's, that's a good thing to remember. So I, I think as, as engineers, um, we need to constantly keep our skills sharp. And if that's a simple way to go about it, just learn something new about Wi-Fi every day. There's lots to know about Wi-Fi without a doubt. And uh, you learn something new every day, you'll be able to continue to move on in the industry, encourage others. And who knows, maybe you, as you're a CWNE, you need to give back to the industry. Maybe you can be a mentor of someone coming up in the ranks as well, just as you no doubt were mentored by somebody else. Very cool, Glenn. Thank you for your time, sir. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it, Matthew. Have a good one. Bye. 10 Talks. In the words of the other Python that all nerds love, and now for something completely different. Hi, I'm Tom. Do you know what I do for a living? I'll give you a hint, not wireless. Um, I build communities and I maintain them and I keep them from imploding on each other. And so when I talked to Keith about coming here, I said, why don't we talk about community? And he said, awesome. So that's why I'm here. So let's talk about a community. Well, what is a community? Well, other than the place where you live and a show that Dan Harmon made for NBC that they seem to hate, a community is a group of people that have very similar ideas and very similar uh, wants and they express them. We're all members of the wireless community, right? Do you know there are members of the tech field that community in here who are delegates? Do you know that there is a 3D printing community and a yoga community? And as I found out last night, people that like to play video games. There are many communities inside of other communities. We learn about them, we join them, we move back and forth between them. How do communities start? Well, it turns out you, you find yourself in an island in the middle of Oklahoma and you go, does anybody wanna talk about anything that I wanna talk about? And that's kind of hard because, again, Oklahoma, um, you can't find people to talk about technology and things like that. So you try to find like local user groups and you try to uh, engage people and they're just like, eh, if it's not sports ball, I don't care about it. And so you have to find a way to interact with people that are part of the community you want to. Thank you, internet. Thanks to the internet, we can find people now. We can talk to folks. And not only can we use Slack and Twitter and Facebook and a whole bunch of other things to talk to the people that we want to talk to, but as it turns out, we can learn about new things. There's no way I would have known there's a community for people that want to hover their drones in their backyard and take pictures of the stuff in their backyard if it hadn't been for Lee. Lee told me all about that and showed me the pictures too. 
And once you find that community, you have a whole bunch of new friends, and it's really awesome, and you feel like you belong for the first time in your life, and when you log onto Twitter, everyone's like, hey, Norm, even if your name's not Norm. And that's great. So now we've got a community. What are we gonna do with it? Well, like my friend Chris here, we are going to find a way to truly harness the power behind our communities. Well, how do you do that? Well, the first thing you have to do is, in the immortal words of Her Highness Beyonce, you've got to build some people up and be willing to stand there and go, yes, queen, you have to shout from the rooftops. This is hard for people to do. It's very easy for you to look at something that somebody's doing and go, yeah, you did a pretty good job with that. It's really hard to look at your buddy behind you and go, did you see that thing that Jennifer wrote? That was awesome. That's what I do for a living. I take people who write things and I tell other people about the things they write. You can ask Rob. I think half of your uh, YouTube series videos views came from us. That's a joke. Um, but that's what I do. I've actually seen the metrics. When we share things, people's blog statistics go through the roof because everybody wants to go check it out. We want to share and we want to build the entire community up. Do you know why? Because when everybody's awesome, your level of awesome rises with it. The other thing you have to do is never stop learning. I actually like the fact that Scott just a minute ago was like, I wasn't a CWNE. I had taken none of the tests before last, I came up and presented last year, and now look at me, I are a CWNE. You can't stop learning, but not only that, you have to encourage others to learn. Ask the telco guys what it feels like to stop learning new things. If you can find them, because none of them exist anymore. Who runs old phone systems other than the Department of Defense? Data processing people. Yeah, they, there is nobody left in that area because none of them wanted to learn. And the ones that did, like our friend Amy here, well, she's at a wireless conference and not a voice conference for a reason. Not at a voice conference? You have, to, you have to encourage people. You have to pe make people want to learn more. That's why a lot of these programs like Akaha Masters are great. UC's like, you know what? I want people to learn my stuff. This one's kind of interesting. Do you know how you harness the power of your community? You find people that don't agree with you and you talk to them. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second. But if you only surround yourself with people who agree with everything you say, somebody is wasting their breath. You have to engage folks. I don't agree with everything Devin says. I'm gonna to talk to Devin, do you know why? Devin points out the holes in my arguments. Now. We do this a little more civilly than some people. And there are people that I'm downright not civil with anymore because it turned out that their style of telling me that I was wrong usually involved a whole bunch of curse words and some things about my mom. I don't want that. What I want is, sir, I respectfully disagree with your opinion and I would like to point out why I think you're incorrect. I'll listen to that. My mom doesn't care either way. <laughs> Now this is a really exciting one because I can guarantee you at least 20% of the people in this room have used social media to get a job, get a better job, get a different job. Norwood did, where did Norwood go? He's hiding from me. Um, <laughs> he's eating lunch, he had to feed the baby. Um, have you guys ever called somebody and asked for a job reference? Hey, can you please call these people and tell them I don't suck? Have you ever given a job reference on LinkedIn? Hey, this person does not suck. Can you imagine how awesome it would be if 100 people called all at once? It was like, Rob Boardman is the most awesome human being on the planet and he did not pay me to say that. You know why? Because people think that other folks' opinions matter a lot, especially in an area where you have a lot of people who are um, considered experts in the industry. Anytime anybody calls me and asks for a job or a job reference, I'm like, damn right they're awesome. I don't think they should be being an SE for you, but I think they're damn awesome. <laughs> That, that, that's a joke from Tech Field Day. Um, uh, at Tech Field Day, we have a rule that if it's the first time you've ever been to our event, you're either going to get fired or quit within six months because you're going to realize that things are a lot more awesome than you are where you are at right now. Remember I told you that my other job is keeping communities from imploding? It turns out that's a lot harder than you might think. Um, it seems to be a statistic that if you get enough people together at one time and give them something to talk about, they're all going to start ending up arguing with each other. This is something we have to be very cognizant about when we're harnessing the power of our community because unlike the emperor, there's no such thing as unlimited power and if you start pulling it out of people, you're gonna make them very, very angry. Everything goes bananas. Literally, I've seen this happen in a Slack channel, on a Twitter fight, everything's civil and all of a sudden people have knives and they're ready to stab each other in the face. How does this happen? 
Generally, it comes down to this. Um, we tend to not respect each other. That's a hard thing to do. We argue with people. We don't argue against ideas. Um, I know this because I have a gift for character assassination, as it turns out. My blog became huge after I told some guy in Canada that he can get bent because I'm really an engineer. I'm not. I'm not his version of an engineer. But I started building on that. I was yelling at college kids. I was telling people from other people from Canada that I could get bent. And then I realized something. I'm going to be that guy, you know, the one that makes fun of everybody. Don't be that guy or gal or whoever. You have to have respect. Remember, I respectfully disagree with your opinion and would like to argue the merits of your viewpoint, not your mom smells. One of those is a, 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 a much better argument than the other. Speaking of arguments, they happen. I'm not going to agree with everything that you say and you're not gonna agree with everything I say, but please do not shout at me because of it. And likewise, I won't shout at you. Actually, that was taken in the old uh, HP briefing center before they tore it down. Um, I, I like arguing with people, but I like having civil discussions. I don't like screaming. You can ask my kids, I'm not really good at it. But if you're gonna have an argument, here's what you need to ask yourself. Is this the hill that I am ready to die on? Because it's great to steamroll somebody who has no opinion about something. It sucks when you find somebody who knows more about the subject than you do. But this is one that I, the next one is something that I think is really, really important for the community. I'm gonna drop some truth on you. Now for those of you who don't know, this is a nice man named Phil. Phil had a really awesome job at a sports entertainment company and then one night he walked out with a mic, and sat on the entrance ramp and dropped some truth on people. He dropped truth for about six and a half minutes and it was a whole bunch of inside baseball stuff. People in his line of work tend to stretch the truth a little bit. He wasn't. Ask yourself this question. You're about to hit reply because you're gonna tell Devin that he's wrong, or you're gonna tell Ben that he has no idea what he's talking about, or you are gonna tell Blake that I've got the answer to everything that is wrong in your life right now. Here's what you need to think about. Are they gonna listen? Is the community gonna listen? Does anybody care? No truth is absolute, and nobody's viewpoint is the same as yours. And they may love your truth, and they may want you to die horribly in a bus crash. You know why? Because you are upsetting their world balance and view. Don't do that. Truthfully, at the end of the day, when you are ready to pitch a fight, with somebody, when you're ready to pick a fight, when you're ready to pitch to battle, ask yourself a really important question. What am I about to do to the community? Because people are watching. If you really want to harness the power of the things behind your community, you know how you do that? You be respectful, you build people up, you help people out, you tell everyone they're awesome. Don't argue with them. Don't pick fights with them. Show some respect. You'd be surprised what a good community can do to you if you're just willing to play it cool. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Wireless Land Professionals podcast. The podcast for wireless land professionals by wireless land professionals. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Wireless Land Pros for all the latest news and updates. And also connect directly with Keith on Twitter at Keith R. Parsons. Head over to www.wlandpros.com for this episode's show notes, as well as the latest in all things Wi-Fi.